Hey, how are you doing? We're going to pick it up in Matthew chapter 19, verses 1 through 15. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judah to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him, and he healed them there. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female, and said, For this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. Therefore what God has joined together, let man not separate. Why then, they asked, did Moses command that a man give his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? Jesus replied, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard, but it was not this way from the beginning. I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for marital unfaithfulness and marries another woman commits adultery. The disciples said to him, If this is the situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. Jesus replied, Not everyone can accept this teaching, but only those to whom it has been given. For some are eunuchs because they were born that way, others were made that way by men, and others have renounced marriage because of the kingdom of heaven. The one who can accept this should accept it. Then little children were brought to Jesus for him, to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, Let the children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. When he had placed his hands on them, he went on from there. So Jesus had finished saying these things in verse 1. What is that talking about? It's talking about the parable of the unmerciful servant that we talked about last time. Uh, he gets done saying those things. He leaves where he was and goes to Judah. Judea and uh, large crowds followed him. He heals some some people like he commonly does, and some Pharisees come up to him, and, he, and they ask him, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? So they're coming up to him, and the Pharisees, you know, like they have a little bit of an ulterior motive, like they're not just curious, they're trying to test him. And so they're asking him this question, and so Jesus replies with uh, quoting Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, and also Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, and he replies with, God makes them male and female, and also that the two will become one flesh. So they're no longer two, but one. And so God obviously places a um, real, real significance and symbolic significance to marriage, where the two become united and become, become one. And then what God has joined together, then that real sacred significance, then let man not separate. So that's Jesus' answer. So then they reply with, okay, well, but then why did Moses say that a man gives his wife a certificate of divorce and send her away? And so maybe they're thinking they've got Jesus here, but Jesus replies, Moses permitted you to divorce your wives because your hearts were hard. And so his explanation is like, hey, this is not how it was supposed to be from the beginning. And obviously, if, if we're living in a perfect world where things go exactly how they're supposed to, you know, a man and a wife come together, uh, a husband and a wife come together, and, and, and it's, a, it's a good marriage, a fulfilling marriage, and they're able to pursue God together, and then obviously then, you know, not, uh, not get divorced as well. And so that, that definitely is, is God's ideal plan and, uh, and was that plan from the beginning. But, you know, he, he let, you know, Moses permitted you to do that because your hearts were hard, like they weren't really capable of it, so... Um, and then uh, he, he kind of keeps going. Um, the disciples then, after they kind of talk about the situation, are like, hey, if this is a situation between a husband and wife, it is better not to marry. So I don't know if they're just like, hey, if we can't divorce our, our wife, maybe it's not even not worth doing. Like, we don't want to take that kind of risk. I think that's kind of a funny statement for them to make. And Jesus was like, yeah, I mean, not everyone can accept this kind of a teaching. And that's certainly very true. Uh, we need to be very, very careful. And we want to we take marriage seriously. Like this is, you know, it's important. Um, God, God places a, a, a heavy emphasis on it. And when he says and talks about coming back, he comes back for, um, you, know, the, you know, for the bridegroom. Like he talks about it like it's a, like it's a marriage when he talks about, you know, Jesus and the church. And so there's definitely much significance to it. And so um, I think one way that we can pray is like, hey, let's pray for marriages. Because marriage is difficult. You know, it's not so easy to uh, be married for decades upon decades or years upon years. 
and um, people grow in different ways and different things happen and, and kids happen and all these different things. And let's pray for marriages and marriages that feel like they have no hope. Um, let's pray that God would restore some hope in men, some marriages, um, because God has great plans for families and God has great plans for marriages. So let's pray. And if you would pray with me as well. Lord God, we just lift up marriages in this church and we just pray that the marriages that feel like they have no hope, we just pray that you would restore hope, Lord God, and mend those relationships and restore trust and restore love and restore the bond. We just pray, Lord God, that you would work a great miracle there and restore families as well. And we pray, Lord God, just that we would see marriages that are fulfilling and life-giving and that are great examples of what of what you would want lord god we just pray for that to happen in jesus name amen